This video is going to be about the partial reduction of alkynes to trans alkenes using sodium and ammonia. We're going to go through a generic example first, then talk about some more specific examples, and then finally do a detailed step-by-step -step walkthrough of the mechanism. So what do we have here? We're starting with an alkyne, and we're treating it with Na, that's sodium, and NH3, that's ammonia. Uh, this reaction, just so you know, is usually carried out with ammonia as the solvent. So sometimes you'll see NH3L at the end, liquid ammonia. It uh, boils at about minus 33 degrees Celsius, so it's a, it's a very cold reaction that's generally done here. Our product is an alkene, and if you look carefully, you'll see that the hydrogens in our alkene are arranged trans to each other, and this is typical for this reaction. We always form the trans alkene under these conditions. The byproduct in this case is NaNH2, that's sodium amide. Uh, there's actually two equivalents of sodium amide formed in this reaction, because we actually do use two equivalents of sodium metal. Uh, it's drawn in gray here because often you won't see this as the byproduct, but in fact it is the byproduct of this reaction. Now the key bonds formed and broken in this reaction are, if you look, we're breaking a carbon-carbon pi bond from the alkyne to form an alkene. And where that pi bond used to be, we're forming two new bonds. So we're forming two carbon-hydrogen bonds in this case, where the alkyne pi bond used to be. So this falls under the general category of an addition reaction. And in addition reactions are very common reactions, especially in Org 1 when you learn about the reactions of alkenes. I think you learn at least 15 different addition reactions in, uh, uh, for alkenes and another 10 for alkynes. Very common class of reaction. And uh, the, the reaction is complementary to the another reduction or another uh, addition reaction you learn called the Lindlar reduction of alkynes, which gives you the cis alkene. So these are useful in their own ways. Sometimes you want the cis alkene, you use a Lindlar. If you need the trans alkene, you can use sodium and ammonia. So let's walk through a couple simple examples. So here's an alkyne with a benzene ring on one side and a methyl group on the other. Treat it with NaNH3. We end up with the trans alkene. And notice I've drawn the hydrogens in here to show explicitly that they're trans. Uh, but we don't all, won't, won't always show those hydrogens being there. Remember that they can often just be hidden. Uh, they're implicit that the hydrogens are there. But just so you know that those won't always be there to guide you, it's important to be able to recognize a case like the second one where we've got ethyl groups on either side of the alkyne, treating it with sodium and NH3. And here again, we're forming a trans alkene. The hydrogens, although we haven't drawn them in explicitly, are trans to each other. And uh, again, this is giving us uh, that stereochemistry for the product and not the cis. This third example, again, along the same lines, we, we've got uh, a cyclohexane on either side and we uh, treat it with sodium and ammonia and we end up with the trans alkene. And this last example is very important. So once we have a trans alkene, what happens if we add another equivalent of sodium and ammonia? Well, there's no reaction. That is to say that sodium and ammonia will only reduce alkynes and it will not reduce alkenes. So this is an important thing to know that if you have sodium and ammonia, it'll only reduce the alkyne and it'll stop the alkene stage. This is called a partial reduction. It doesn't go all the way. Uh, there are other redu reductants which will take an alkyne and reduce everything all the way. For example, palladium on carbon with hydrogen, that'll give you an alkane, but not this reaction. Um, not sodium and ammonia, it'll stop the alkene stage. Okay, so let's walk through the mechanism of this reaction. So sodium is a very reactive metal. It's a great reducing agent, and a reducing agent is something that can give up its electrons. And sodium, if you know, is far off on the left hand side of the periodic table. It's got a very low ionization energy. So it can easily give its electrons up to other molecules that will accept electrons, for example, alkynes. So when sodium meets a molecule of our alkyne here, we can donate an electron from the sodium to the carbon three in this example, so that we lead to homolytic cleavage of this alkyne, okay? So one electron is going to carbon three, one electron is going to carbon two, so we've got a free radical on carbon two, and we've got a lone pair on carbon three. And carbon three, being a lone pair, will have a negative charge. It's gained an electron. That negative charge will interact with the sodium here. Uh, if you want to keep track of the charges, um, we've got a lone pair on carbon three and an electron on carbon two, so a free radical. Now, what do we know about like charges? Like charges repel. 
And in the case of this cis alkene that I've drawn here, we have two electrons next to another carbon with a single electron. These repel each other. And a little known, a little explored fact uh, in this course that is just sort of taken for granted is that carbons like this free radical here can invert their stereochemistry. That means that the radical that was cis to the lone pair can actually invert itself spontaneously to give you the trans radical. So the radical is on the other side of the double bond as the lone pair. And because they're trans to each other, they're actually going to be further apart. And because like charges repel, being further apart, this is a more favorable situation than if they were on the same side of the alkene to each other. So being on the opposite side of the alkene from each other, now we have a lone pair which can react with our very, very weak acid, NH3, our solvent, uh, to remove a hydrogen from NH3 and give us sodium NH2. We're forming a carbon-hydrogen bond, okay? And now we've got a free radical on carbon-2. We still have a, car we have a free radical on carbon-2, but uh, now it's the only uh, unpaired electron, or only uh, electron density we have. So we take a second equivalent of our sodium, and it adds an electron to carbon-2. We're going to form a lone pair. And now that lone pair can react with another molecule of NH3. We can form a carbon-hydrogen bond here. We're going to break the hydrogen-nitrogen bond. And this is how our trans alkene comes to be. We formed the high carbon-hydrogen bond on the opposite side. And again, we formed another equivalent of NaNH2. So that's how this reaction goes step by step. There is one little thing to note, and, and it's not a huge deal. It's just a question of timing. Um, it's possible to show the reaction of this isomer with NH3 first and then show the inversion. I've shown it coming after inversion. Um, it's, uh, it's really, I think, a fairly minor detail in drawing the mechanism out for this reaction. But if you check your textbook, you might see that it's drawn in a slightly different order. But the ultimate uh, types of bonds that are formed and broken are exactly the same. So if you have any comments or questions on this topic, I'd really welcome uh, any comments left in the space below. Uh, I really appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.